on NTC News. The homecoming parade kicks off tonight. We'll tell you about upcoming events and road closures. Also, we'll see who gets to celebrate winning Yell Like Hell. And looking for a career? NIU brings job opportunities to you. NTC News tonight starts now. You're watching NTC News, DeKalb County's only television news source. On the campus of Northern Illinois University and from the Northern Television Center, this is NTC News Tonight. Hello, I'm Hax Rodriguez. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Sherelle Freeman. It's Thursday, October 20th, and we're gearing up for homecoming. Mitch Mayer joins us now with more information on the homecoming's weekend parade and road closures. Yeah, and you spoke to some organizers of the event. How are you doing, Mitch? I'm doing great. Thanks, guys. I got a look at the route and some of the cool things that are happening during the parade. Workers are raising tents as NIU prepares for homecoming festivities. There will be road closures all along the parade route starting at the NIU art parking lot on College and all along the route, which includes Locust Street to 1st Street, down towards Lincoln Highway and 3rd Street, which is considered a performance point. A number of groups, anywhere from groups that do dancing to stepping and strolling to we've got um, an acting troupe that's doing um, a song from Rocky Horror Picture Show uh, coming, so that'll be happening at our performance point. And then some of those groups will be performing throughout the parade. Yeah, we had about 63 entries sign up this year, uh, and we're expecting around that amount to come to the parade today. So it should be a pretty, pretty exciting day. The parade will run from 7 to 8 o'clock tonight. Thanks, Mitch. An annual homecoming week tradition known as Yell Like Hell kicked off last night. Sam Schweiss has more on the high flying event. Go Huskies! <laughs> NIU Greek Life came together to compete for Homecoming Week Spirit Points. Fraternities and sororities teamed up to practice cheer routines for Yell Like Hell. Greek and non-Greek students came out to support the NIU community. Um, we're here with uh, one of our organizations that we're going to homecoming with just to support uh, NIU as a whole and show them how much we love it here. Um, we're with Delta Gamma. I'm part of Sigma Nu. Um, we're going to homecoming with them this year, so we have um, events all week. Um, and then we obviously go to the tailgate on Saturday together to support NIU. Performers worked to perfect the routines to bring home the first prize trophy. Points were rewarded for a level of difficulty, creativity, and crowd participation. The organizers of Yell Like Hell bring this event back each year for homecoming week. Um, it's a homecoming tradition, basically. So they've been, they've been doing this for as long as I know, like probably longer than like from the 80s and up. So we've just been keeping it going. Um, it's always every Wednesday night of homecoming week. Fraternity Phi Kappa Psi attempted to bring home the first place trophy for the third year in a row. Each group is given two weeks to practice a routine with a different partner each year. Oh, I'm here today because I want to support this uh, cheerleading competition and support my fellow brothers and the sorority day we're going with Phi Kappa Psi and Delta Zeta and, you know, have a great time in the crowd cheering with all these wild animals. After some technical difficulties, Phi Kappa Psi and their partner, Delta Zeta, added another first place trophy to their growing collection. For NTC News, I'm Sam Schweiss. The homecoming court was also announced during Yell Like Hell. The coronation of the homecoming king and queen will be Friday at 5 p.m. in Central Park. Joining us now is Luke Arrington, who is running for homecoming royalty. He is here to speak to us about this week's homecoming events. Thanks for joining us, Luke. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you all for having me. All right, so tell me more about the homecoming week and how has your experience been so far? So I've had a great experience this homecoming. I've went to all of the events. It's a week of a lot of excitement, a lot of events, as well as a lot of free food. Mm -hmm. I mean, free food was a right. pizza, hot dogs. You're gonna be hungry We had right Buffalo now. Wild Wings. Ooh, Ooh Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings. Oh man, everyone's awesome favorite. Wings. Right, Seriously, yeah. but um, on a you know more serious note, what's the most exciting thing that you've done so far? I would have to say campaigning. I'm a political science major, so campaigning is right on my alley, and I've had so much um, fun reaching out to people, trying to gain support. And you know, I look at campaigning, whether it's you know a political race or a homecoming race, as just a great opportunity to network. Cool. Okay. So, what made you want to run for the homecoming court this year? So, I think I've dedicated my four years at NIU to service, mm -hmm. as well as um, socially reaching out to people of different cultural backgrounds. So, I think that I should be able to have a chance to represent NIU and somewhat be the face. Are you kind of nervous about the results? Or? I am nervous. I'm optimistic, but I don't want to have any high expectations so that I'm not let down. But 
I'm optimistic. Right. Are there any more events coming this week? Yes, yeah, so today is the parade, and tomorrow is the coronation cookout where they decide who actually wins. All right, I do have to ask for personally, do you have a sa an extra sash? I think I look good in that. Ooh, I, 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 I may have to hold on to it. <laughs> uh, I don't have an, really? I, I don't have an well, extra. Well, you know, I understand, I understand. Well, thank you for joining us, Luke, and good we luck with the results. Good luck. Yep, thank yeah, you all thank for you. having me. So what's the weather expected to be like for the parade? Emery Danins has a quick look. Well, temperatures have dropped significantly over the past week. Today, we're only expecting temperatures in the mid-50s, and tonight we'll dip down into the 30s, so it'll be very chilly out there. For tonight's homecoming parade, we are expecting temperatures in the upper 40s. Yes, that's the 40s. It's going to be very chilly out there, and we're also expecting wind gusts up to about 20 miles per hour, so definitely dress in layers if you're going out tonight for that. And then, as you can see behind us, they are working on stuff for this homecoming game this Saturday, so if you want to hear more about the weather for this homecoming weekend stay with us today's engineering job fair is one of several fairs on campus this week that could help students find jobs earlier in the week NIU held its semi-annual career fair students networked with more than 200 companies as at NIU's convocation center the students learned about various career options Many students say the fair was a good opportunity for them to interact with employers. The event is to have students get the opportunity to interact directly with employers and learn more about the different hiring needs that they have. But it really builds your confidence and makes you more marketable to employers. Great experience. I love that all of the companies offer diversity and variety. NIU's Career Resource Center allows walk-ins, job searches, and interviews. Electric vehicle drivers have a new location on campus where they can charge their car. The station is located on the west side of the parking garage off of Carroll Avenue, and drivers can charge their car in less than four hours. Most major credit cards or a charge point prepaid card are accepted. Rates are $1 per hour, however, after four hours, it will go up to $5 an hour. Coming up next, we'll hear from a student who shares with us why he thinks the Black Lives Movement on campus is important. And it's Fire Prevention Week. One local community is making sure kids know how to stay safe. Since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around ten thousand dollars in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom. That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. The presidential candidates are back in their corners today after last night's final presidential debate. The candidates once again did not shake hands at the start or end of the debate. Moderator Chris Wallace brought up topics ranging from the campaign tones to rigged election allegations and whether either candidate would support the winner. You know, let's be clear about what he is saying and what that means. He is denigrating, he's talking down our democracy. And I, for one, am appalled that somebody who is the nominee of one of our two major parties would take that kind of position. But what we want to do is to replenish the Such Social a Security nasty Trust woman. Fund by making sure that we have sufficient resources. It's rigged because she but, should but, never, Chris, she should never have been allowed to run for the presidency based on what she did with emails and so many other but, things. But, sir, Are they're you saying you're not prepared now to conduct that principle. What I'm saying principle. is that I will tell you at the time. I'll keep you in suspense. The debate was held at the University of Nevada in Las Vegas, and it lasted an hour and a half. Is this year's election rigged, and how those closest to Trump are responding to his recent controversy? These topics and more top this week's political pit stop. Here's NTC's Sada Kendor. Thank you. Let's take a look at this week's political news. Donald Trump's campaign manager says she does not believe widespread voter fraud will happen during this election. Conway told CNN she believes Trump had good reason to believe in voter fraud. Every single day, you are facing lies and distortions and an avalanche of negative coverage, or I would say, put differently, incomplete coverage, as if there's only one person running for president and not two. Despite his campaign's feelings, Trump continues to voice his concerns over a rigged election. Trump says the media is rigged, which has an effect on polling places. He explained his position on a radio program Monday. If you look at the polls and the polling places in various cities, they're also rigged in the cities. President Barack Obama took time on Tuesday to respond to these rigged election allegations and had some choice words for Trump. If, if whenever things are going badly for you and, and you lose, you start blaming somebody else, then you don't have what it takes to be in this job. Uh, I'd advise Mr. Trump to stop whining and go try to make his case to get votes. 
There's still controversy brewing over this week's WikiLeaks release of Hillary Clinton's hacked emails. The emails are from campaign chairman John Podesta to some of Clinton's advisors. Donald Trump says the emails portray Clinton as corrupt. The Clinton campaign is accusing the Russian government of orchestrating the email release. WikiLeaks is denying that claim. In an interview with CNN's Anderson Cooper, Melania Trump came to her husband's defense in her first interview since the now infamous Billy Bush 2005 video. He apologized. I accept his apology. I hope the American people will accept it well. And uh, it was many, many years ago. Uh, he's not the man that, that I know. Melania Trump says that she wasn't surprised that the video was leaked. It's many people um, from the opposite side that they want to damage the campaign. And why now? Why after uh, so many years? Why three weeks before the election? Mrs. Trump says she will continue to fight for her husband and that he will continue to fight until the end of the election. Thanks for stopping with us. I'm Sata Kendor. Thank you, Sata. Election day is less than three weeks away and polls show that Clinton still holds the overall lead. The NIU community has been making headlines recently with the Black Lives Matter demonstrations. Jordan Dene has one student's story. Laughter, positive vibes, and unity filled campus as students came together to demonstrate the first ever Black Lives Matter Week here on campus. Well, the purpose of all of our demonstrations are the same. We want to continue to show the black community and our allies that we can unite one another and come together. Um, a lot of times we feel as though black students can only get together for parties and things like that. And so um, we want to show them that we can get together for a cause, stand together to raise our voice against the injustice that is now evident. There are five demonstrations put together by students to bring awareness to the racial issues here on campus. This week brought out a lot of different students and changed their perspective of the Black Lives Matter movement. So I didn't want to be a part of something that can bring more drama. And then um, Tracy was just like, you know, it's not going to be drama. It's not going to be as bad as, it's, as the TV is making it. And I got involved and it wasn't. It was actually, actually unifying the black people. And that's what I liked about it. Terrence Mitchell, a third year FCNS major who's known around campus for dancing and joking around, now considers himself to be an activist. I didn't come around it. I tried to stay away from stay away from it. Um, it was just a shocking to them that a voice like mine was can be a part of something that that's very positive, you know what I'm saying? Um, I can get out get the message out very well. I'm very, like I said, I'm very outspoken, I'm very loud. So if you have someone like me, part of the message we're trying to get out, you can get out, because you know, I want to make sure to get out. Although Terrence is still a little hesitant about totally immersing himself into the, the full Black Lives Matter movement, he feels as though he can be the change he wants to see here on campus. With NCC News, I'm Jordan Dene. There's no word yet on what the next move for the Black Lives Matter movement will be here on campus. A once-hopping nightclub is reaching a fork in the road. Otto's has been closed for two years after a massive pipe burst. The mayor says the city will not demolish the building if the owner agrees to make the necessary repairs. The property is valued at $200,000, while the cost of the demolition would be just over $400,000. What was once a family-run auto shop is now just rubble and dirt. Protano's Auto was torn down this week. The cost for the demolition was around $16,000. The Cal City officials bought the property in February of last year. People in the community say it was an eyesore. The Sycamore Fire Department is igniting a passion for fire safety within the community. Katie Brost has more on the story. Sycamore Fire Station 2 opened their doors to families and community members with fun activities in honor of Fire Prevention Week. Despite cooler temperatures, high winds, and lack of sunshine, hundreds of parents and children came out to join the fun. Activities included hosing fake fires, going inside the many trucks, seeing inside the fire station, face painting, and demonstrations. My favorite activity, I think, would probably be actually be getting tests in the ambulance. Like, I'm getting my heart rate um, considered, and it's really cool. It's here because it, the little kids can learn a lot of stuff about this place. I've liked it really well. I mean, there's uh, everything here. 
Fire Prevention Week falls on October 9th. During the entire week, firefighters went to many schools, but felt having the open house would spread the knowledge of fire prevention to more kids. We have so many young children that run around in our communities that look up to grown-ups as role models, and it's very important that we are those great role models and that we do those little reminders of fire prevention and fire safety. This was the first year for the open house, and it will be expected to come back next year. Hopefully next year we'll be able to work food into the to the deal. Uh, I know we just wanted to test the waters a little bit and see how the, the turnout was, and I think it's a very successful turnout. The Sycamore Fire Department wants to get the word out to residents to stay safe. For NTC News, I'm Katie Brost. If you have any questions regarding fire safety, feel free to contact your local fire department. NIU students are doing their part to help people in need of food. The Husky Food Pantry is now open at the Chicks Evan Field House. It provides NIU students with vegetables, fruits, and other necessities. The Assistant Director of Community Service says students are welcome to take what they need with no limit, free of charge. We wanted to provide opportunities for our students that would help those who are, who are facing food insecurity. And so in that event, we provided a SNAP counselor. So that's something that is akin to what people might know as food stamps. In order to use the pantry, you can't have a meal plan. It must have a one card. It's open every Thursday from 5.30 to 7.30. Now let's take a look at weather with Emery Danins. Are we going to have to bundle up this homecoming weekend? Yeah, we are. It's going to be a little bit chilly out there. We're only expecting temperatures to be in the upper 50s, maybe low 60s, but it's going to be pretty windy. You'll definitely want to bring a jacket, maybe a scarf, some gloves. I bet you felt like you needed those today. It was very <laughs> cold out there, yeah. right? It was pretty cold out today. We only reached high temperatures into the mid 50s, so not very not very pleasant out there. And also we saw very cloudy skies. So if you were outside today, you probably saw those overcast skies. Again, those winds gusting up to about 18 miles per hour. Very windy out there, not very sunny. Low temperatures felt very cold. I know my eyes were watering with the high winds as I was walking to class earlier. That is no fun, but we are gonna see some relief this weekend. So let's take a look at the larger scale to see what we have going on. Last night we had this low pressure system and associated cold front that passed through the area bringing lots of rain and that'll be moving off to the east as we go into Friday and then we'll see this high pressure system start to build into our area. So we'll see partly sunny skies on Friday and then as we go into Saturday for our homecoming football game that high pressure is going to be even more dominant so we will definitely see some sunshine on Saturday but again will be chilly out there for that so you want to be sure to bundle up now let's take it back to tonight here in DeKalb we'll see mostly clear skies overnight low about 36 so we will see some patchy frost out there since we are getting close to that freezing temperature and it's going to be pretty windy winds from the north 20 miles per hour gosh it's going to be pretty cold out there so definitely definitely take with you a jacket maybe even two if you need to and again maybe some scarves and gloves now going into tomorrow we will see some sunshine should be a nice day a little bit cooler high of only 53 tomorrow so and we still do have those winds about 20 miles per hour so it will be sunny but it will be still breezy make sure you bring a jacket or a scarf with you tomorrow and then as we go into the evening on Friday we'll see again clear skies overnight low of 36 and finally as those winds start to die down a little bit at least temporarily now take a look at our seven day forecast again Friday a little bit chilly high of 53 but then Saturday for the game we are expecting sunnier skies and then the rest of the week we'll see temperatures generally in the lower 60s for the highs and overnight lows in the mid 40s so it's definitely feeling cooler out there a lot more fall like so hopefully you can get outside and enjoy the beautiful weather and that's all for weather so let's send it back to the desk thanks Emery the DeKalb and NIU community showcased the different kinds of art they have to provide Here's a look at the so-called Art Walk. The DeKalb Area Arts Council hosted the first annual DeKalb and NIU Art Walk. The Art Walk symbolizes the many arts that can be found in the community. Over 24 locations participated in the event. I would love to find more ways of attracting university students into downtown DeKalb. Whether it's a question of specific types of shops, particular foods, from restaurants like Tapaluna and stores like Cracker Jacks, downtown DeKalb offered various forms of art to see. NIU as well participated in showing their dedication to the arts. Uh, but there are a lot of cultural venues here in DeKalb and at the university. And so um, uh, the thought was that could we do something that was kind of a coordinated event where um, we would all uh, kind of stay open at the, on the same evening.
from paintings in the president's office to carvings to jazz music, NIU showed their love for the arts. Um, involved local businesses as well, um, but also the more traditional art venues like a couple of the museums on campus, um, some of the art spaces in the downtown area, the library, just a lot of the cultural kind of highlights of the DeKalb area, um, and how we could showcase not only the community and its involvement in the arts, but of course the university and its involvement with the arts. The DeKalb and NIU communities hope to do the event next year. If you want more information on the arts in the NIU community, check out Alcal Hall's museums, which are open five days a week. Coming up next, and I use Facing Buffalo this weekend. We'll see what's in store for them. Also, one man's hobby brings the fall spirit to the Waterman community. Now for a look at sports news, here's Farouk Olaiwala. Thanks, Alex. The Cubs' bats look to be back to normal, and volleyball continues their quest of perfection this weekend. So let's get started. Let's begin with the 110th homecoming football game at Husky Stadium where the Huskies will be looking to celebrate the festivities by beating the Buffalo Bulls on Saturday. Players to watch for on the Buffalo sideline are freshman quarterback Tyree Jackson who throws for 170 yards per game and can run the ball averaging 4.6 yards per carry and running back Jordan Johnson who leads the team with 456 all-purpose yards and averages 76 yards per game. The Huskies will look to wide receiver Kenny Galladay, who leads the team with eight touchdowns and 725 receiving yards on the season. Quarterback Anthony Maddie looks to have a bounce back week from the tough loss to Central Michigan. He leads the team with 825 passing yards and seven touchdowns. Running backs Jordan Huff and Joel Bonnier look to rush the Huskies to win. The Huskies women's volleyball team looks to add another MAC championship this year as they are undefeated in the conference. In last week's game against the University of, of Buffalo Bulls, NIU forced the Bulls into a four-game losing streak. The Huskies started the game strong and never gave up as they shut, shut out the Bulls three games to none. The Huskies add one to, one to their winning streak, making it ten in a row. NIU leads in the MAC West and has their next game away at the University of Ohio. NIU Women's Tennis sends a pair of Huskies to the Midwest Regional Competition. Pauline Shawafambira and Ade Osobuin will represent NIU in the Indoor Tennis tur Tournament. Senior Husky Shawafambira will face off against Detroit Mercy's Pauline Van Herk in open competition, while Osobuin will take the court in first round action of the main draw. In between singles action, the Husky duo will be competing in doubles play today. The Chicago Cubs looked to bounce back against the Dodgers in Game 4. The game started off tight with no score through four innings. Wilson Contreras makes a great defensive play to throw out Justin Turner at second, leaving the score at zero. Later on, Dodger outfielder Andrew Tolles hits a single to Jason Hayward in right and launches it into home. Adrian Gonzalez is coming around from third and is called out on the play. Gonzalez doesn't think so, but the umpires go to review and confirm that the Dodger first baseman is out. Now the Cubs are up to bat, Wilson Contreras hits a bloop single to the left and Ben Zobris comes around to score. The throw is wild and the runners advance putting the Cubs out in front. Later in the inning, Jason Hayward is up to bat grounding out to second base. This brings Javier ba Baez for the first playoff RBI as a Cub. Cubs getting off to a good start early after scoring any, any runs in the second and third. Now the slumping Addison Russell comes up to bat and blasts one out to deep to center field. Joe Peterson runs into the wall and the ball is gone. Russell comes out, out on his slump and gives the Cubs a 4 to nothing lead for his first career postseason home run. Cubs first baseman Anthony Rizzo is up, up and blasts one to the center field. Peterson looks up and that ball is gone. 
Rizzo gets out, out of his slump going three for five. The Cubs end up crushing the Dodgers 10 to two. They tie the series at two games apiece. The Cubs keep their playoffs hopes alive as they play game five at Dodger Stadium tonight. They head back to Wrigley with a home field advantage against the Dodgers for game six and a possible game seven this weekend. The Cubs continue to depend on their stellar defense and pitching to get, get them through the NLCS and into the World Series against the Cleveland in Indians. That's it for sports. Let's cheer on our, our teams competing this weekend. And as always, go Huskies. Let's take it back to the desk. Thanks, Farouk. I got to get my W flag out for tonight. But DeKalb announces hours for Halloween trick-or-treating. Trick-or-treating hours for the city will be from 4 to 8 p.m. Police discourage clown costumes this year in the wake of recent clown activity. Authorities are viewing them as potential threat to public safety. DeKalb Police Department also offers safety tips for those trick-or-treating. For questions regarding Halloween, call the DeKalb Police Department at 815-748-8400. All aboard. Head down to Waterman for a model train that's picking up riders. Nicole Ryan has more on the story. A staple of the Waterman community is pulling into the Lions Park Station for the fall season. The pumpkin train made its first stop in Waterman 22 years ago, and the haunted house, or in this case train station, followed soon after. Guests are invited to tour the haunted train station first, and after making it out alive, board their train. Train owner Peter Robinson says that he started the pumpkin train to provide families an inexpensive way to celebrate the fall season and to help his community. The pumpkin train also fulfills a childhood dream of his too. Everybody wants a model train and I just made mine a little bigger. You know, and I can share my train and train ride with people day in and day out. That's why we do the public events. On the train, riders discover that Lions Park has been transformed into a Halloween town of sorts, complete with a haunted tunnel that's suitable for all ages to ride. Although the pumpkin train is meant to get visitors in the Halloween spirit, Robinson says that family fun is the main goal of his attraction. It's geared for little children. Our haunted house is for small children. It's if you want blood, guts, and gore, we'll tell you where to go, but this isn't it. We're out here to have a good time, and it's wonderful family fun. Visitors can hop on the pumpkin train every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in October. For NTC News, I'm Nicole Ryan. Robinson extends an invitation everyone to visit Waterman during the winter for his free Christmas train. Can we go? It's free. I like Christmas, guys. Yeah, Come on. Fun. Right? Seriously. <laughs> All right. Well, NTC News site is produced and directed by students here at Northern Illinois University. For more on NTC News, look us up and like us on Facebook, and you can also check out our website. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, everyone.